after she said those words to me in front of a room full of people I did something that would change the course of my life forever I got up adjusted my tie and said I ain't doing this anymore and walked out that was the last meeting I ever had with that company back in 2012. I was working for one of the big corps and I did have a very well paid job. But towards the end of my career there, it felt like I was wearing a straight jacket to work instead of a suit jacket. I had so many ideas for growth, setting up private clinics, streamlining operations in the pharmacy but they just didn't get listened to i understood it's tough to get anything through the corporate red tape when you're working for one of the big companies but enough was enough i needed to grow i needed to get out of there and personally innovate As much as I love the NHS, I see it as a bit of a straitjacket for community pharmacy. It's very restrictive. The market for prescriptions is heavily saturated. You don't set the prices for prescriptions, lots of competition, and you're getting paid less. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't focus on prescription items, it's always gonna be a core part of your business model. But I'm sure you'll agree, things are getting tighter. But because you're an independent pharmacy, where no red tape exists, and where you make the decisions about where your company goes, there are no boundaries like I had when working for the big corps. You've got room to innovate. And that tightening grip of the NHS can loosen if you focus more time and energy into offering private clinical services. It's incredible what pharmacies can offer today. And with the help of the brilliant companies in this expo, I believe you can become the most powerful, influential, important healthcare hub in your community, in your city even. There's so much potential for growth down this route. Yet, like my store manager said all those years ago, I'm still hearing some of these sentences from pharmacists from time to time. I get it. It's a habit embedded for tradition, traditional, a tradition habit. But those sentences, they do not stand anymore. And here's why. I've broken it down into chunks. Your sphere of influence, private and digital healthcare and how they've boomed, how our behavior has now altered, your ease of access of training, revenue potential and digital marketing. You see, when you go down the clinical route, your sphere of influence as a business grows significantly. So traditionally with the NHS dispensing model, you cater for a, a people about a one to two mile radius around your pharmacy. That's the tradition. But if you start offering a travel clinic, for example, or a weight management clinic or an earwax removal clinic, your sphere of influence immediately grows to cover the entire city. So this is what we really need to understand. 
people are willing to travel to much greater distances if you're offering these services, meaning that you've 10 times your sphere of influence. You're not serving a community of 60,000 people anymore. You're serving a community, you're serving the city. 600,000 people you can now influence if you offer private clinics. So if I offer Google, if I open Google Maps now and type in the word pharmacy, you can do this while on your smartphone now. I get a load of pharmacies pop up naturally. You can see that on the, on the right there. It's saturated. However, if I type in the keywords travel clinic or weight loss clinic, less than a handful pop up and none of them are pharmacies. So you can see that image in the middle and on the right there. None of these are pharmacies. So I've got a question. Is anybody a pharmacy owner from Sheffield today? No. Okay. If there were, I've honestly just revealed a gold mine for you. And I'm not exaggerating here because if I was that pharmacy owner, I'd go home straight after this show and I'd work out how I'm going to offer a travel clinic and weight loss clinic in Sheffield. And then I'd optimize my pharmacy so well online that I would always appear at the top of the search results on both search and maps. And I'd have hundreds of reviews and I would sink the competition. I can see on there, genuinely. That's how unsaturated this market is still. So once again, your target audience is not just your postcode anymore, it's your entire city. And that's really important to understand. So the pandemic has also helped private healthcare boom over the last couple of years. More people are looking for alternative healthcare because the NHS is so rammed, we know that. And people prefer to pay to get quicker. Sorry, people prefer to pay, pay to get healthier quicker. Also, Many of these private services and private organizations now are online. Uh, so that now this is a good a time as ever to get, get in on this rapidly growing space. So our digital behavior has also changed. We've become supercharged digital users. The stats right there that glow for a pharmacy, in my opinion, are that near me searches have doubled since 2015 and roughly 97% of people who use online search look for local businesses. They're very powerful indicators uh, that um, community pharmacy should be going online and very powerful in indicator for a clinical service oriented pharmacy and the opportunities that exist in front of them. It's also easier to get started delivering private services than ever before. More of us are becoming independent prescribers and firms like Pharma Doctor, for example, make it super easy for us to be offering POMs. You can offer, you can get up to 60 POMs with Pharma Doctor now under a PGD. Timper Health, another fabulous company, allows you to offer an earwax removal service in your pharmacy. Medichex allows you to supply blood testing kits. And Noracore, don't know if you've heard of those guys, they allow you to create a pain clinic in your pharmacy now. Essentially, you have the opportunity to become a very powerful, complete, health hub in your community, which can gen generate a shed ton of revenue for you. 
take a look at this pharmacy for example they offer a plethora of services so they do vitamin b12 injections i know they do blood testing they do a travel clinic and they offer a weight management clinic too that graph you can see there is traffic over time and that's between 20, 2021 and 2022 they reached an all-time high achieving 5,000 page views every day at one point and they were generating over a hundred thousand pounds in revenue every single month that's staggering can you imagine 5,000 patients going into your pharmacy every single day? That's exactly the same. Your website is your digital pharmacy. So the way I see NHS prescriptions now is not about how much money you can make from them. I see them as a driver for converting them into private clinic clients. That's how I see the NHS prescription model now. And that's where digital marketing comes into play. This is the way you're gonna drive as much revenue from private clinics as, as possible. So like I said, it's time to think, in my opinion, use your NHS database as a, as a client base that you can upsell these very powerful services to. So if you've got 5,000 patients on your PMR system, for example, you, you've got to get them enrolled onto your website or get them enrolled onto WhatsApp or an email marketing solution where you can communicate with them directly. But that's only 5,000 people. Like I said before, if you offer private clinics, you can now service 500,000 people so we need to think about seo search engine optimization paid ads and um social media to communicate with all those people and i'll come on to those a bit later but firstly if you're prescribing poms or you're delivering private clinics you've got to think about how to digitize them why so you can make it as convenient as possible for your patient to use the service making it digital allows you to reduce the burden administrative burden in your pharmacy also and making it digital allows you to drive as much conversions from them as possible so that's what i'm going to talk about right now So to demonstrate this, we're gonna focus on the following services that are in growing demand. Prescribing POMs under a PGD or if you're an IP, and what I've termed the more invasive clinics where you have to get more involved, such as an injection, uh, an earwax removal service or weight management clinic. As an IP, or if you're working with a private doctor, you can offer all types of POMs, whether that be under the condition of asthma, migraine, or UTIs. So to make it as easy as possible for the patient to begin their consultation, you must digitize it. And the best way to do this is through your website. So that's why we had to build a solution for it. Following a digital consultation, a patient can pay for their medicine online or collect the medicine in the pharmacy or have them delivered. So let me give you a short tour of this solution right now. So a patient can select the condition that they are wanting to treat and learn about the treatments available under that condition they'll then be able to begin a, a, risk, a, a risk assessment consultation um, 
either through an online form or via a virtual meeting with the uh, virtual consultation with the pharmacist. This is where you ask the questions required for supplying the medicine. So as an IP, you're able to add and edit as many questions as you want and make the risk assessment unique to yourself. Following consultation, the patient can then choose which med medicine they prefer to purchase. They'll then go through the checkout process where they can select whether they want to collect in the pharmacy or have it delivered. And finally, they can pay for the medication online. As a patient, I can access my personal dashboard and understand where my order is at within the whole process. And I can message my pharmacy directly too. Doesn't really get any easier for a patient than that. And that pathway right there currently is GPHC compliant. Now, as an IP, you'll be notified of the order via email and you'll come through to the back end and see the order as such. And this is where you have to decipher whether you're happy to supply the medication or not. This is a very, very important step, of course, and you have to be confident uh, in your decision with the, with the supply there. Uh, and the GPHC are, at this stage, increasingly asking for evidence to show them that you are intervening uh, before you're supplying the medicine. So if you're happy with everything, uh, then you can approve the consultation and this will automatically generate a private prescription so you can dispense it lawfully. That's how you digitize your IP clinic. And now with that model, you can actually service the entire UK. Now I know you'll have some questions about that, for sure. Very short preview there. We're at stand H53 if you want to come and speak to us and talk to and ask more questions about that. If you're offering POMs through PGD, you can use a variation of the system that I've shown you. However, it also does depend on the PGD that you're using and the legislation with that PGD. However, as an example, let's take a look at norethisterone, which is a common treatment given uh, for period delay under a P PGD. So firstly, you need to make sure you've got content on your website about the condition. Optimize content, and I'll get onto that in a sec. But then you've got a few options about how your patient interacts with you. So if your PGD supplier, and I know Pharma Doctor have their own online portal, then we can redirect them to use that online portal and they'll start a risk, risk assessment consultation over there. Alternatively, they may go through the software that we've created or the patient can access a booking calendar on the system where several other things can happen. So they can book in to speak with the pharmacist virtually. You can ask them a series of questions just like a risk assessment does. And you can take payment for the medication online and then of course the patient can collect the the medicine or you can deliver it. The virtual world is boundaryless. Unlike your physical world, you can do so much digitally. There's loads of ways you can digitize the process, but it just depends on how you're offering it. Again, we're at stand H53 and we can talk to you about those. So what about the more invasive clinics where you have to do a physical examination, injection, 
or procedure. Well, for some of them, I would absolutely always build a separate website around that particular service and connect it to my main pharmacy website. Why? That's primarily because of the demand for, ser for, these, for these particular services and how much money you can make from them. So if you really want to dominate your city and influence that 600,000 people, I would always look at creating subsites for the following services. So your travel clinic, aesthetics, earwax removal and weight management. I'd always have four separate subsites that are all connected to each other via links and connected to my main website. Why would I do that? For search engine optimization. And I'll get onto that right now. And the next thing you need to consider um, after following the subsites is the uh, is an online booking calendar. I just touched onto that now. I would always also install install live chat on the websites and a solution to build a patient database, such as an email marketing solution. That right there, with that system I just shown you, is how to build a beautiful digital revenue generating clinical oriented system. But once you get your digital base set up, it doesn't stop right there. We need to help these people find our services online. So we need to market ourselves. So what's the best way of doing this? So we need to split it into internal marketing and external marketing. Internal being that patient database that you already have, such as in your PMR system, or the people that walk into your pharmacy. And external being the people who don't know your pharmacy exists or your services exist either. So if you're an established pharmacy or you already have a patient database in your PMR, that's the first place I would focus. They're your patients already, they trust you, and trust is the ultimate way. And it's, it's, it's always powerful for business. Trust is the ultimate influencing factor. So you've got to find a way to communicate with them. I'd also get a large, bright TV screen in your pharmacy and on your shop window. And very importantly, get your team involved. They can make a huge difference to driving clinical service provision, make them champions and even incentivize them for getting uh, customers and, and patients to sign up. So that's internal. What about external? How are you going to influence them? Well, firstly, you've got to understand how they're searching for your services and services in the first place. Where are they searching? Google, of course. So you have to start dominating that search engine locally. And the best ways to do that are through SEO and paid ads. In last year's session, I dedicated a whole session on, the, on SEO. It really is truly business changing. And if you're offering private clinical services, it can't be ignored. There's loads of information on, on the Pharmacy Mentor website about SEO, and I've popped a link there to a, to a very nice guide, a comprehensive guide ab ab about it. Um, massively powerful tactic, but it's important to know if also for Google Ads, very powerful tactic there, but it's, it's important to know that Google and Facebook, they're clamping down on the ability for pharmacies to push paid ads through them. So that's why I've popped a, uh, a link there to LegitScript. LegitScript's there to help legitimize your business as a real pharmacy. So you've got to go through them now. And of course, we can't forget about social media. The best way to generate engagement in your community. Um, but 
social media is very saturated now so you've got to create a content that is is really engaging the best way to do that is through video people want to see a video of their local pharmacist talking about these services uh, and it's the ultimate way to build trust so as well as the biggies out there like facebook instagram google business you've also got TikTok too very powerful massive growth in the last couple of years less saturated so uh, now than than facebook i know i've only got one minute left so how do you get started well the first thing you need to do you got to seek help you can't do this on your own and that's why you have the amazing organizations in this expo today but the first important thing is delivery you've got to make sure that you can deliver on the ground and give great customer service and following that build a digital strategy that needs to be developed and then that can be embedded into what you're offering but whoever you work with it's important that they understand your business through and through otherwise you'll spend a lot of time explaining how your business works but lastly it all comes back to mindset and innovation and a strong drive to change and evolve one of the big blockers we know in pharmacy is time so you need to think about how you can release more of that to head down the private clinical service route. So are you ready to go beyond the boundaries of the NHS? Are you ready to step into private clinical service territory? And are you ready to digitize with it and revolutionize your pharmacy? My name's Sam. Thank you very much for listening, guys. And uh, I don't have any time for questions right now, so sorry about that. But if you do, we're at Stand H53. Thank you so much for coming.